Welcome back to The Frequency. What you know about the Emerald Tablet to Thoth. Well, we're going to be diving in to the teachings therein. These mystery teachings and unveil some profound stuff. So for all the initiates out there, everyone seeking, this is the right place to be. The Emerald Tablets resurfaced out of divine time, right? And they're here at your fingertips because they shall reveal all. The Emerald Tablets are written in a certain fashion that awaken the inherent wisdom of the soul. Okay? Master Thoth has been here guiding and uplifting humanity since we, we crawled out <laughs> of, you know, the barbaric ages. And these tablets, my friends, are truly the most profound text you will ever find, read, or listen to. They were written in, a, in this certain rhythm that is, it, there's magic herein. And I don't need to, <laughs> you know, try to uh, fight for that. You can just go listen to these things and awaken the inherent wisdom of your soul. Because the vibrational frequency of the words, of the poetic nature of these is profound. Okay? And they reveal to you exactly the wisdom that will bring you to the next level to master each cycle. Uh, and basically, at each level, it reveals different things to you, okay? Master Thoth is the god of wisdom. And he was once a mortal man, but ascended up to the, the great white brotherhood, essentially. And they are what brought these tablets back. And you could go dive into all the history of the tablets and all this stuff. Um, but the true seeker knows truth, knows wisdom when he hears it. And I've never heard wisdom like it's spoken in the Emerald Tablets. I've read a lot of texts, a lot of sacred books. And truly, this is the, the thing you must listen to for all initiates out there. So we're going to be diving into this mystery teaching. Um, I'm trying out this new recording. I like to listen to it in different voices because... It all awakens different aspects of you. But go check out Ancient Astronaut Archive to listen to them in full by yourself. But here we're going to be going in and I'm just going to be giving my analysis and unveiling and shedding more light in a more modern tongue, I guess. So without further ado, all you initiates and sons of light out there, let's dive into the wisdom of Thoth, the Emerald Tablets decoded. Said the children of light. Times there are when they awaken, come from the depths to be lights among men, infinite they among finite. He who by progress has grown from the darkness, lifted himself from the night into light, free is he, made of the halls of Amenti, free of the flower of light and of life. Guided he then by wisdom and knowledge, passes from man to the master of life. There he may dwell as one with the masters, free from the bonds of the darkness of night. So right here, my friends, it's talking about man's ascent, okay? And if you haven't already realized it and derived this from your own life, man is here in bondage. We're in bondage to the darkness of night. And there's a couple major themes throughout the Emerald Tablets. One of the themes is the fetters of darkness and the bondage of night. And man's place, or I guess purpose, here on earth, and that is to awaken your consciousness, illuminate the inner life, and, I guess, join the brotherhood of light. The second major theme is to become one with the sun state. Ever keep your eyes turned towards the light. The third major theme is to become formless. To become formless is to literally enter the sun state, right? is to transcend and transmute all these forms because man is in the process of evolving to forms unknown. And through this ascent, becoming formless and all this stuff, damn, the Emerald Tablets are so damn key for just illuminating what the hell is going on here. Seated within the Flower of Radiance sit seven lords from the space-time above us, helping in guiding through infinite wisdom, the pathway through time of the children of men. 
mighty and strange they, veiled with their power, silent, all-knowing, drawing the life force, different yet one with the children of men. Aye, different, and yet one with the children of light. Custodians and watchers of the force of man's bondage, ready to loose when the light has been reached. First and most mighty sits the veiled presence, Lord of Lords, the infant. Real quick, this is an episode of Gems of the Sacred Wisdom. Make sure to subscribe, everybody, because I'm picking out gems for you. So I'm about to pause this, go find more gems within here for the children of light. And the sons of light, <laughs> they'll, they'll awaken, my friends. They'll awaken. So uh, let's keep striving. Ah, uh, here we go. Hark ye, O man, and listen to this wisdom. Where do name and form cease? Only in consciousness, invisible, an infinite force of radiant bright. The forms that ye create by brightening thy vision are truly effects that follow thy cause. Ooh, major theme of the Emerald Tablets. All is law all is law and all effects follow a cause master thoth he sought to live in harmony with all law and to live with in within harmony of all law to live as one with the all is to discern and decipher the effects from the cause and the law of that cycle to live at the cause of life, my friends, is so damn important. It's so damn important. Everyone out here is just floating. They're floating through the effects. And they're always worried about effects, right? How they look or what they're doing or all these different things, how to heal and, and whatnot. Be the cause. Seek the cause the effects. Never be mastered by the effects of thy life. Never be mastered by the effects of thy life. The cause, my friends. For instance, I just remember like, the reason I worked out so much in high school and like, you know, was so disciplined in my health and diet, I was reflecting upon this because I lost that for a long time. And the cause of it, the cause of it was the, um, basically wanting to, to be like this like warrior archetypal figure that I had in my mind from reading fantasy books. <laughs> Literally. It sounds funny as hell. But the cause, my friends, like the reason that the motivating factor that actually pushes people through hardship, such as like to get in shape, is causes such as like you go out with your friends and, and, and the girls and stuff and like everyone else is more masculine than you. And you seem to be overshadowed. And uh, this is made apparent. So then, like, you start working out really hard. Bang. There's the cause. So if you want to create an effect, if you want to manifest something, if you want to, you know, have a different reality, stop, stop looking and focusing on that reality. That reality is the effect. What you are manifesting is the effect. Who you are becoming is the effect. What is the cause? What is the cause? The cause, my friends, must be motivating. It must be powerful to you. It must be very, he like, here and present in your life, right? Meditate upon this. Because the law of attraction, all this manifestation shit out here, everyone's dealing with the effects, okay? And it's very difficult to get deeper into this kind of science of cause and effect, okay? But the, the reality in which you envision Know what's the effect. Find the cause. Man is a star bound to a body until in the end he is freed through his strife. Only struggle and toiling thy utmost shall the star within thee bloom out in new life. <laughs> it's like every, every passage, every sentence in this text is so damn illuminating. That's like, like 30 chapters of the Bible right there. How much of the Bible is about affliction and suffering and redemption? 
think about it. How much of the Bible or any sacred book or any great wisdom or teaching by sage is about suffering and redemption? Our, like man's entire existence here, if you reflect upon this with a sober, rational thought, you will see the suffering and misery inherent, affliction inherent. Never run from your affliction and never condemn yourself for your affliction. Know that gold is only forged through the furnace of affliction and that the noblest qualities of the soul come out through hard, from hardship. Know <laughs> or respect anything without contrast. This is super illuminating. Go check out my Colburn Bible. Uh, the last Gems of Sacred Wisdom was all about affliction and suffering. And the second thing I want to say here is God's chosen, my friends, the elect, <laughs> the fallen of Zion. Their affliction is the greatest. Okay, who's the master of this world? This earthly realm we see out here, the material. Obviously, it ain't the most high. Obviously, it's not, you know, the rule. If you live for this world, your inheritance in the heavenly brotherhood will be stripped from you. This world, my friends, to make it in this world is to serve the master of this world. So those who are striving, right, they're going to be afflicted because the demiurge or whatever you want to call it is, is going to be, you know, tricking you, is going to be deceiving you, is going to be creating these hardships for you, but that is there for you to grow, okay? Affliction forges the soul of gold. you never seen a strong man without many scars. <laughs> any great man, any, anyone who's done something extraordinary, anyone who's literally gone to the next level, the, the perfected initiates, think of the Buddha, Think of Yahushua, Jesus Christ. Think of Zoroaster. Think of Krishna. Think of Master Thoth. All of these individuals started out as human. To go to the next level, my friends, to become the perfected initiate is to overcome and conquer each trial that are our step, my friends. Go check out the initiations of Christ. Look at the beginning tablets of the Emerald Tablets and you see that Thoth was the greatest of all men. And Thoth overcame and conquered this world. And as Jesus said in the Gospel of Thomas, he who, uh, oh, never mind, I forget that quote. But to conquer the world, <laughs> damn, that, that, is, that is immense power. But to conquer yourself, <laughs> that's extraordinary. Let's, let's move on. He who knows the commencement of all things, free is his star from the realms of night. You, your inherent divine state that is ensnared, entrapped, in bondage, because you are in a prism, which is a prison, right? My friends... Most people in this new age are claiming, you know, we're all gods and all this stuff. I, I don't like these teachings. Because the fact of reality is, the majority of people are devolving. The majority of people are devolving. Immortality must be earned. Your soul must be crystallized and formed. You must create the higher bodies. Right? To ascend into your own divinity. Would God be egotistical? Does God, it, like your image of divinity incarnate, is it jealous? Is it egoic? Is it self deceptive? Look at your own life. Your image of divinity, is that how he lives? No. No. We're not all gods. Respect the masters. And seek to follow in their steps. And know. Know. That you came. <laughs> from the plane above. Your identity. Is everything. This is why you seek. You seek. To know. 
who you are. The supreme knowledge of self is of utmost importance. The knowledge of self is what unveils the knowledge of God. And as Hermes would tell you, the knowledge of God is what saves you. Master Thoth would tell you that wisdom is power and power is wisdom. Never stop seeking. And Master Thoth will also tell you that man is formed and is wisdom. Remember, O man, that all which exists is only another form of that which exists not. Everything that has being is passing into yet another being, and thou thyself are not an exception. Ah, this gets into the corpus hermeticum, and the unmanifest and the manifest. To become imperishable, to put on the garments of imperishability, right? To remove the the garments of darkness, to escape from the transient realm, to crystallize your your soul uh, and ego into the face of immortality, is to unleash the essence of yourself. You notice how he said here that all forms are in the process of transitioning to other forms. Why does Master Thoth always say to become formless? To become formless, to escape from the bondage of night. Because all things here are transient, and everyone who has any single attachment to and like an earthly ego eye or a single thing on earth, right, is attached to something that is in a process of dying, in the process of transitioning to other forms constantly. And with that attachment, you can never know or seek or attain the higher levels because the truth is only revealed to, to who whose consciousness is freed from bondage to things that are decaying and dying. <laughs> you can't know who you are if you still think you're this and, and your body's lusting for this and, and you're going after that. Nah. To the wisdom. Consider the law, for all is law. Seek not that which is not the law, for such exist only in the illusions of the senses. God damn, Thoth, you're killing me right now. <laughs> I can't even play this video for five seconds. <laughs> Consider a law, because all is law, right? Anything that you think is you, anything that you believe in, any ideas that fall short of the divine laws, Right? These are illusions. And we live in the land of illusions. The Hindus called it the Maya. All things are not as they seem. All appearances, <laughs> all things of substance manifest from deeper causes, from deeper laws, from deeper forces in nature that are more subtle and less inherent. And this is like the shape they hold for this moment. But anything you're holding on to, any illusion, right? That's separating you from the truth. And to fly into the face, to become the sun, my friends, is to become authentic and true to your own, to live in accordance with your own nature. To live in accordance with your own nature was the principal tenet of Stoicism. Stoicism being the supreme paramount of reason, earthly reason in that era. To live in accordance with your own nature, right, is to know the laws that govern, right, and live in accordance with these. Sickness, uh, chance, luck, fortune, all these different things is either law unrecognized or your lack of ability to live within the cycles and your and this creates lack, which creates you lusting and reaching for something that's not coming from the source. And all of this ties you deeper into bondage. Know what is going on here. This ain't some kind of new age teaching. This is the, this is the ancient spirituality, which is truly religious piety combined with deep philosophy, right? Of how to reach, go to, and ascend to the next level and bring your brothers with you. 
Wisdom cometh to all her children, even as they cometh unto wisdom. All through the ages the light has been hidden. Awake, O man, and be wise. Awake, O man, and be wise. Gaze upon this life. Gaze upon this day in this way with a sober mind. An elevated gaze from the spiritual perspective. Awake and be wise. Damn, I love that. The, the knowledge has been hidden for millennia. My friends, the most important thing you can do, other than awakening and illuminating your soul, like that's like the grand mission, the most important thing you could probably do in the next, I don't know, day or I don't know, year, your whole lifetime, is listen to the Emerald Tablets. <laughs> it's the most important thing you could do. You got to realize that millions of people have been burned. All the sacred books have been destroyed. You got to realize that the forces of endarkenment have been doing everything in their power, raping, burning, and pillaging any wise men, any sacred establishment for millennia, for millennia. Okay, the ancient ways have been turned upside down and all things are deceptions out here except these emerald tablets on alchemical emeralds, right, that were released to the public just now. And now with the advent of the internet, we have access to all sacred texts ever written. Seek and you shall find. All shall be revealed in the latter days and we're living in the latter days, my friends. Your quest here depends upon like your entire mission on earth is to illuminate the emerald tablets is perhaps one of the most important steps you will take and if we have access to this literal alchemical gold for your soul like if we have access to something that will that will increase your your wisdom 100 fold like this right why the fuck are we watching cat videos and wakeboarding and shit or on youtube or just like these random you know like other th like guys listen to the gold i have only filled my my mind with the gold of the most respected and venerable masters the sacred books for multiple years i exclusively read listen to like uh, a certain master that i hold in high regard or the most sacred texts of the ancient races that's it and that might be extreme to most, <laughs> you know, always dwell in, in this kind of philosophy. But it's like, yo, if you, we can be filling our mind with gold constantly all day, every day, like you can literally have any master ever speaking directly into your ear all day. Why the fuck do we go to college and all these things? You can literally have the wisest individuals. Or if you're trying to do business or some shit, you can go listen to the best business individuals. But we can have the wisest individuals speak into our ear all day. Like, no one had this period before. Like, think about how difficult it was 2,000 years ago to get your hands on a single fucking book. And now you can go listen to the Emerald Tablets and all these, like, 100 different voice recordings instantly for free at the tip of your fingers. Yet we don't do this because we don't recognize the advantage we hold and we don't recognize that this uh, period of release and illumination is going to be short and the time is short and there's nothing more important that man could do right now than philosophize and philosophize with the foundational principles with the correct i guess perspective that is given to you from the masters from thoth hermes the buddha Krishna, Jesus Christ. I would even include Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, guys like Nietzsche, Julius Evola, Samuel on Weor, you know, uh, Rudolf Steiner, Manly P. Hall. Like, these are my teachers. People will be going to school and they have this no-name professor speaking about shit he's never known. Just regurgitating. I sit with the ancients. 
How about you? And I don't say this to, you know, draw any attention to myself. I don't fucking care about what you think about me. I'm literally just trying to, t like, show you the perspective of what you could be doing with your time. Because illumination is real. And it is your, it is your mission here. Unless you want to serve out your 108 incarnations in bondage and never escape. Hence your soul being recycled. Like, that's just, I don't want to, that's not like fear porn. That's just the truth for those ready to hear that. But, yeah. I, don't, I, I truly don't believe anything's more important than seeking, uh, you know, ironing your mind and honing it into a knife, illuminating and awakening the soul and uplifting your brothers and sisters. This is, that, that is my, my values and that is my mission. And maybe you can take something from that. But. Deep in the mysteries of life have I traveled, seeking and searching for that which is hidden. List ye, O man, and be wise. Far neath the earth crust, in the halls of Amente, mysteries I saw that are hidden from men. Oft have I journeyed the deep hidden passage, looked on the light that is life among men, searched I the hearts and the secrets of men, found I that man is but leaving darkness, light of the great fire is hidden within. Before the lords of hidden Amente learned I the wisdom I give unto men. Masters are they of the great secret wisdom brought from the future of infinity's end. Seven are they, the lords of Amenti, overlords they of the children of mourning. Okay, my friends, now we're getting serious because those who are still with us, yeah, the true initiates out here. We're going to be diving in to the Ancient Astronaut Archive, Emerald Tablet 13, The Keys of Life and Death. This voice, this awakens you. List ye, O man, hear ye the wisdom. Hear ye the word that shall fill thee with life. Hear ye the word that shall banish the darkness. Hear ye the voice that shall banish the night. Mystery and wisdom have I brought to my children, knowledge and power descended from old. Know ye not that all shall be open when ye shall find the oneness of all? One shall ye be, with the masters of mystery, conquerors of death and masters of life. Aye, ye shall learn of the flower of Amenti, the blossom of life that shines in the halls. Do you want to conquer death and become a master of light? Huh. <laughs> Seek the wisdom. Listen to the illuminating voice. In spirit shall ye reach that halls of the Minty and bring back the wisdom that liveth in light. Know ye the gateway to power is secret. Know ye the gateway to life is through death. I through death. <laughs> the last video I made. Death is the door. Death is the door. Your fear of death is what creates it. Death is what you make it. Life is how you take it. Death, but not as ye know death, but a death that is life and is fire and is light. Desi a death that is life, fire, and light. Huh. Huh. The twice born through the door of death, through the door of Daleth, or Doth. <laughs> the door of death, my friends. The, the conscious death. Through life and through light and fire. Didn't the Bible prophesy that in those times we'd be baptized by fire? Hmm. Fire thou to know the deep hidden secret? Look in thy heart where the knowledge is bound. Know that in thee the secret is hidden, the source of all life and the source of all death. List ye. No matter how important listening to these tablets are and seeking the wisdom, the most paramount of importance, the thing that is the, the, the separating factor to someone who does wake up and someone who doesn't, doesn't matter how intellectual they are, is whether they opened the doors of wisdom centered in the heart or the soul. My friends, by reflecting on yourself, 
by deep introspection, reflection, and mastery of your psychology, by close observation and the scalpel of self-critique. This is how you awaken yourself to truth. Because you have no idea how much you ignore or avoid or, uh, I guess, act out of dark impulse. Dark impulse just meaning veiled impulse. You don't understand why. You don't understand you. You don't understand your psychology and we avoid our addictions to pain or pleasure. Let's continue. Old man, while I tell the secret, reveal unto thee the secret of old. Deep in earth's heart lies the flower, the source of the spirit that binds all in its form. For know ye that the earth is living in body, as thou art alive in thine own form to form. The flower of life is as thine own place of spirit, and streams through the earth as thine flows through thy form giving of life to the earth and its children, renewing the spirit from form unto form. This is the spirit that is form of thy body, shaping and molding into its form. Know ye, O man, that thy form is dual, balanced in polarity while formed in its form. Know... Ooh. Ooh. Hermetic philosophy being unveiled right here, my friends. Know that man's form is dual. This is perhaps one of the most important perspectives you can have of yourself. You must understand that you have a spiritual form and a physical form. And within that, you are made on the blueprint. You are made on a certain blueprint, right? Of the tree of life. And this tree of life has two poles, right? It has the pillar of severity and the pillar of mercy. The rising column and the falling column. The masculine and the feminine. Feminine. And the tree of life is basically the divine roadmap and uh, all mystery teachings combined to show you how to rise through the middle pillar. Jesus called it the straight and narrow, right? The razor's edge. Buddha called it the middle way. And it is through uh, basically separating the subtle from the gross, the positive from the negative, right? And then uh, basically diffusing diffusing the war within between the dark and the light and rising through the center consciousness ascends through the middle way right it ascends through the middle way and the middle way reaches its zenith right it it comes together in doth which is the third eye which is gnosis which is divine illumination this opens uh when you can make the two into one and the and the male, like the female, uh, and the female into one, the hermaphrodite. So Akhenaten or Moses was depicted as a hermaphrodite, along with many other masters in the ancient mystery systems. Why is this? Why was Hermes, like, uh, and Hermes and Aphrodite right here? <laughs> the hermaphrodite is Hermes and Aphrodite. Okay. And this is the man and the female into one. And this happens in your mind. The third eye is the symbol of the divine union between the divine masculine and divine feminine. The perfect matrimony in the bridal chamber, my friends. (laughs) And this, yeah, the law of polarity is so fucking key. Uh, If you don't understand the law of polarity, you are a slave to the causes of the effects and reacting to shit that is only there to create a reaction from you because it controls you. What you react to unconsciously uh, has rules over you. The war is not against against flesh and blood. It is against principalities and rulers of darkness. (laughs) Yeah, so polarity, my friends. And know that man's form is dual. Damn, these words, I could just go so deep and so far... Uh, but it really doesn't matter. It's really about what you can uh, ascertain from these words of Thoth. And furthermore, like I said, these words are multi-layered. You can listen to that Emerald Tablets a hundred times. And in that 100 listening uh, times you listen to it, you will re- receive wisdom seen from a hundred different planes. <laughs> it's like a hundred different stories in one because everything is everything. That when fast on thee death approaches, it is only because thy balance is shaken. 
Ooh. When fast onto thee, death approaches. No, it is only because thy balance is shaken. Holy fuck. My friends, how did the Sumerian kings live for 43,000 years, apparently? How did Master Thoth live for almost 100,000 years, if you really go real deep? You know, how can man become immortal? Immortality is living in balance with universal, natural law. When man's balance is shaken, fast up upon the death approaches, because you are no longer feeding and fueling from the fountain of youth that flows through you from your divine center, and that is the ether or the light of light, the light that underlies the sun. And to feed on that is it is to become immortal. It's to become And when fast upon the death approaches, it is because your balance is shaken. Whew. It is only because one pole has been lost. One pole has been lost. Know that the secret of life in a minty is the secret of restoring the balance of poles. Balancing the poles. Balancing the poles. Balancing the poles. That is the key, my friends. How to become formless. To become formless is to balance the poles. How to escape the bondage of night is to balance the poles. When things are... when. The poles are unbalanced. There's a war. There's a conflict. There's a tension. To transmute resistance, to transmute barriers, is to diffuse them, dissolve them. To transmute is to balance them. The law of polarity is key of keys. All that exists has form and is living because of the spirit of life in its poles. See ye not that in the earth's heart is the balance of all things that exist and have been being on its face? The source of thy spirit is drawn from earth's heart, for in thy form thou art one with the earth. When thou hast learned to hold thine own balance, then shalt thou draw on the balance of earth. Exist then shalt thou, while earth is existing, changing in form, only when earth, too, shall change, tasting not of death, but one with this planet holding thy form till all pass away. List ye, O man, whilst I get the secret, so that ye too shall taste not of change. One hour each day shalt thou lie with thine head pointed to the place of... Comment below if you want me to do a mystery teaching, just synthesizing and putting together the meditations included within the Emerald Tablets. Powerful vibrational frequency work, for sure. Um... How deep are we? 38 minutes in. Yeah, I'm going to call it right there for this first video on the Emerald Tablets, uh, restoring this series. Again, this is gems of the sacred wisdom, my friends. This is, this is everything. Super important stuff we'd be diving into here. Um, I'm going to continue on making more of these. This is what I'm really called to do, and this is what I know I should do. So... Let me know what you enjoyed. There's so many different themes and secrets encoded within the Emerald Tablets. So please comment below what you want to dive deeper into. And we will continue on in the next Gems of Sacred Wisdom. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go check out my Patreon uh, and support me there if you feel it's so called to do. I have an archive of, ex of exclusives and way deep esoteric mystery teachings and energy work. And I really just appreciate the support. Furthermore, I do Skype sessions if you want to talk to me. And I'll see you guys next time. This is Demetrius and Master Thoth, the Mystery School, signing off. Also, last note, go check out Immortal Truth if you're into this kind of stuff. Immortal Truth is my Mystery Teachings channel. Peace out, everybody. See you next time. Much love.